Hi, and welcome to Blender Clinic. Um, I was asked, well, I wasn't asked, a question was asked on Twitter recently about how to make um, some footprints in the snow in Blender. And I said I would answer it. Unfortunately, the Easter holidays happened and three days later, I still haven't answered it. So <laughs> I'm going to very, very quickly show you how to do um, displacement of footprints and that sort of thing in snow, mud, whatever surface you want. Um, in fact, let's just, I'll just show you what a, this is, this is what we'll be creating today. If that piques your interest, uh, then do watch on. It won't take us long at all. In fact, let's dive in. Otherwise, I'll talk with day away. So um, let's delete everything. So A to select all, X to delete. And I'm going to hit Shift A and I'm going to create a plane. So there we go. This is going to be our ground. I'm going to tab into edit mode S and scale her up. Whee! That's our floor plane. And then I'm going to hit space. Now, bear in mind, if space doesn't bring up a search menu for you, you can use F3. But I have my key map set to right click select and um, space bar as search menu. Uh, and I'm just going to type in sub divide. The thing is, I've been using Blender 10 years and I still haven't learned where most of my favorite controls are because I've always just found them in the search menu. As long as I know what they're called, I don't need to know where they live. It's a little slow, but you know. Bear with. So I've just sub subdivided it twice uh, by 10, which has given us a fairly dense mesh. That's what we want to see. And um, we can call this snare. And we're going to add a cube. Yeah, shift A, add cube. And go into edit mode. And I'm just going to uh, drag this little mother hubbard up. And I'm going to change my pivot point to 3D cursor, S, Z. Let's scale it down flat. I'm going to go 7 to go overhead. Control R to add a loop cut. S, X. I'm going to start scaling on the X axis. And yeah, I'm just trying to make a very approximate foot. Approximate foot. Like a very bad band name, Matt. Everything sounds like a band name after you pass 30. Anyway, I'm just adding loop cuts with Control R using S and X to scale along the X axis. And you get something like this. It's not great, but it is good enough. And then we'll add a modifier, subdivision surface, tab back into edit mode, Control R to add a loop cut, and just drag it down to flatten that foot out. We'll apply the modifier, space, Shade smooth, and there we go. We have a beautiful foot worthy of a Nike commercial. Uh, I'm going to add an array modifier. I'm going to take the count of that array modifier up to four. I'm going to turn off the relative offset and turn on object offset. With my uh, 3D cursor still centered on my foot, if it isn't, you can just select the foot, hit Shift S, cursor to selected. Here we go. And Shift A, and I'm going to create an empty. Uh, we'll call the empty shoe master. I am the shoe master. And we'll change the cube's name to shoe, I guess. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to select my shoe. I'm going to go to object offset. I'm going to set the object that I will offset by as this empty we have called shoe master. Then I shall select the shoe master. Which turned to be turned out to be more tricky than I expected. I'm just going to move it, and what it's going to start to do is going to displace these the arrayed object. I'm going to change my pivot point again to active element. You can do that with the full stop on your keyboard as well. So active element. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to drag it up a little bit. I'm going to rotate it and up again. And there we go. So now we have four fantastic feet. And I can just apply this. I could have been more careful. I could have done that with a bit more precision in mind. But frankly, frankly, my dear, I could not give a damn. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. So I've just applied the modifier and I've moved that to the center of our feet. And I'm going to select the feet, select the empty, control P set parent to object and keep transform and now when I move this they will move also uh, unfortunately 
these are all right feet. We want some left feet, so I'm just going to tab into edit mode. I'm going to select with L those two feet in the middle and median point for my pivot point, S, X, minus 1. And I'm just going to pull these over to the side. Then I'm going to control I to invert my selection. And I'm going to drag these over to the other side. And now we have some left feet, we have some right feet. And they're all mastered, uh, they're all parented to our master uh, empty. So now we need to animate this. Fortunately, that will be quick. I'm going to turn on auto keyframing. I'm going to drag this back on the Y axis. I'm going to go forward about 100 frames. In fact, let's change our scene's length to 100 frames. And I'm going to drag this over here again on the Y axis. And now we have this sort of animation going on. Now, what we want is the. Uh, we want the. As it moves forward, we want it to rotate. So I'm just going to bring open my transforms here. And we want it to rotate on the x-axis. And we want that to be powered by the motion on the y-axis. So I'm going to go to the y location. I'm going to um, click and choose copy as new driver. And I'm going to paste that onto my x-axis, uh, my x-rotation. And then I'm going to hit play. Shift space to play. And you can see, not only is it going incredibly fast, but it is also, unfortunately, going backwards. So you can see, it's it looks a bit like if a clown in a cartoon were slipping on ice. Which, yeah, that could be a good look. I mean, I'm not here to judge. But we can fix that. So what I'm going to do, we could just go here and open Drivers Editor, but it'll probably pop up on one of the wrong windows. And so I'm just going to open my driver editor over here and hit N to pop out the side panel or you can, you know, just click the things. I'm going to select our the the driver which we've created is popped up in this um, menu tab list over here. So we'll select that and then we'll, you know, we'll go over to the, the properties for that driver over on the right hand side. As you can see, by default, when we created that driver, it created an averaged value, and it is just taking the averaged value of the variable it created called location, which references the Y location of our uh, empty. Um, so the driver's value is coming out as minus 21.833, which is not what we want because it is a negative value. That is why it is spinning backwards. So. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to change the average uh, uh, average value, the method of, of it calculating, to a scripted expression. And that's going to give us this little expression window, which it has conveniently added the location variable, the variable it was calling earlier. And what we can do is we can do some really simple code. <gasps> Not code! That's what I used to think every time someone would go, oh, we're going to use some code, we're going to add a driver, we're going to do this. Don't sweat it. I'm going to teach you the most valuable piece of mathematics that a blender artist could ever know okay so we've got the variable there and we're just going to type asterisk minus one and what that does is it, it multiplies the value of the uh of the location and it multiplies it by minus one and what that does is it inverts the number it makes it a minus figure or if it's a minus figure already it makes it a positive yeah so it's flipping the number around so if if, if we hit play now you'll see that it's actually now it's rotating in the correct direction we've inverted it with three character typing three characters asterisk minus one write it down on a <laughs> post-it note today and stick it on your monitor it, genuinely i did that when i first learned that i was like that's so useful that's so useful write it on a post-it note stick it on your monitor never forget it and then we're going to, you know, I'm going to keep teaching you these little snippets of, of drivers because I'm terrible at code. I can't code, but I remember these one or two little things and they've got me through most of my career. Because, yeah, it makes me look smart. Smart. Okay, right. Uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, anyway, location times minus one. Unfortunately, it's still going a little bit fast. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our location and we want to, to modify that. Maybe half that speed would be good. So we need to divide it by two. But before we can divide it by two, because there is 
this, you know, the inverse bit there, uh, that times minus one. We need to put it in brackets, okay? So we're going to put location in brackets, and then we're going to type divide by two. So I'm just going to, can I zoom in on that? There we go. So you can see it a bit better. In brackets, we have location divided by two. And the brackets, what that does, it just says, calculate this first and separately. You know, this is not part of that string of maths. We want half the value of the location variable, which is defined below here. That's just referencing our y uh, location. And then we're going to take that and we're going to times it by minus one, inverting it. So half the location inverted, and that will be the value of our rotation. Yay! I don't know if I've over explained that or under explained it, frankly. Uh, it's always a bit of a mystery with drivers, but as you can see, it is now somewhat slower and going the right direction. In fact, we could divide it by four. Lovely. And now we have some decent, you know, we, we have uh, we have roughly what we want, and that's fine. This is not a drivers and animation tutorial. This is a tutorial on dynamic paint. Now I feel like it's sliding too much. I'm being a perfectionist. I'm just going to go and change it again. Yeah, that's a bit more pleasing. Anyway. <laughs> You don't have to do that. You don't have to do any of this. This is all just waffle. Uh, so I'm going to select our snow plane. I'm going to go and I'm going to go to the, the properties. I'm going to go to the physics tab, which is this one. And I'm going to click dynamic paint. Um, we want the type to be canvas. It's already set to canvas. And we're then going to click add canvas. Now we've got a canvas. Then we're going to choose our shoe, not the empty, but the shoe itself. We're going to click dynamic paint. We want to change the type to brush, and then we want to click add brush. Now we have a brush. Um, <laughs> I would go back to the snow plane, and I'm just going to change. And actually, do you know what? I'm going to hit play. So shift space to play, and you can see nothing's happening. All right, all right. And then we're going to just change the surface uh, type to displace. And suddenly you'll see these footprints start to appear in our plane and that is it that's all you have to do we've essentially we've created um, displacement very very quickly uh, in a plane um, with our brush object now the brush object here normally that would be the character's feet or a mesh a low poly mesh that you parent to your character's feet and and you can create this, uh, you know, it'll create the snow sort of displacement automatically for you. Now you want to keep this, I mean, obviously we're using quite high poly, uh, quite a high poly count. So what we could do is actually trim. Oops. I've done a terrible job of that. B to box select. I keep holding shift, I don't need to. X and choose vertices. So now we've got, um, we're using less topology, uh, putting less strain on Blender. We could subdivide again, maybe twice. And now we've got some very dense topology here, but it still should run in almost real time. In fact, yeah, no, it's going 25 frames a second. I'm just going to move this up a touch. I'm going to clear the keyframes because I have auto keyframing on. We can turn that off just so we'll get some deeper footprints now. But what we're getting here is um, it's not always doing a perfect job there. So what we could do is turn up the subframes on our calculations. Oops, where's it gone? Sub steps. And that might help. Not really. Not really. Oh, do you know what it is? I'm very silly. We need to check the normals of these objects. So you can see the normals are facing the correct way on the uh, feet that weren't uh, mirrored. They weren't scaled X minus one. So I'm just going to select again using the L key, hovering over and hitting L. I select those two feet and then I'm going to hit space, flip, normals. And hopefully, yes, there we go. Now, the subframes are useful, um, 
subframes basically calculates an additional frame in between each frame um allowing uh you know smoother transitions between steps so if these feet were moving particularly fast you might not get any footprints at all because it might sort of just like put the foot in so deep that it actually you know the foot appears oh god sorry the foot appears here and therefore never makes contact with the plane and then it pulls out through there but it's not calculating in between you do you understand what i mean I'm not sure I'm explaining it, but um, subframes essentially calculates an additional frame in the middle, which will smooth out that sort of thing and save you some jaggies and whatnot. Um, something else you can do here is just dial up the displacement factor, how much it displaces. Uh, you can cap the amount of displacement there as well. Um, other things that are fun to do, <laughs> let's type shade smooth on here and you'll get a, a far more pleasing, softer uh, appearance. You can always add subdivision after the fact, after the um, dynamic paint, but it will run slow as hell. You can also use a smooth corrective modifier that will again further smooth out your uh, topology. Again, we could try to subdivide this one more time. One more time. Ah, uh, Daft Punk, we shall miss you. Um, and get again even more detailed uh, topology just bear in mind obviously the feet aren't particularly densely they don't have a particularly dense topology so they're not particularly smooth themselves so they might be causing some edging and uh, you know some some hard sort of poly polygonized edges in the footprints as well so that's something to consider um and then my final tip for you if you've got like mud, if you're doing like a mud, it, or yeah, I mean, you could work this with snow as well. But if we go on here, we can use dissolve, set this to about 500. And what this does, it basically, it heals the displacement over time. So the mud could be seeping back in the water of that swampy water could be seeping back in to fill the footprint back up or as the snow falls if you put it really slow as the snow falls it fills back up you know the footprint and that i think is it's just wonderful these are such powerful little bits to have and it's so quick to set up um so yeah there you go that's how you create a displacement uh for footprints in snow or uh, mud or whatever you want um you can take this so much further in fact adding textures uh and various clever shaders to this could really flesh it out um but i don't got time for that and also there are so many people so much better at teaching you how to use shaders uh than i would be i'm quite rudimentary when it comes to them i'm, I'm very much a texture paint kind of guy uh, i do some little bits of fancy stuff but you know compared to the guys out there who are doing like these fully procedural vector displaced things i ain't nothing so uh, i'll keep my mouth shut on that and uh yeah yeah it's quite a fun one i think go and try it today it doesn't take long at all um and yeah i hope that's been useful and i will catch you again no doubt in fact i want to do a little bit uh, about uh, i think the next video might be running scripts from stream deck yeah if you don't know what that means, tune in, find out. It, it could be, it could change your life. Or it could waste half an hour. Who knows? Anyway, thanks for your time. Take care of yourself. See you again soon. We've been Blender Clinic. We. It's only me here. I've been Blender Clinic. I've been Chris McFall. This has been Blender Clinic. Take care.